This is basically the best version of an emulator to an Akai MPC that you're gonna get in FL Studio. This is also one of the best apps by far to have if you're a sampler. <laughs> What's good, YouTube? So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to flip and manipulate samples like an industry producer. This video is gonna be broken down in three parts. First, I'm gonna break down where you find all these samples. Second, I'm gonna be breaking down how to chop and manipulate them in FL Studio. And third, I'm gonna briefly go over how to make drum patterns for these boom bap type beats. Real quick before the video starts, I'm gonna have a bunch of samples pre-linked for you guys that you can get in the description, as well with the drums and samples that I use in this tutorial. Instagram and Twitter at Fan of the God. And yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, first let's talk about finding samples. Okay, so as for looking for samples, even though there's like so many websites out there where you can find them, honestly the best site to find samples and probably the most used is just YouTube but the key about finding samples on YouTube is knowing how to like use the algorithm so it always recommends you stuff that you're looking for and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do that so the first thing you want to do is just have like a general idea of a certain sample or something that you like that you want to start off of it can really be anything personally I'll just like look up an old producer on this website who sampled and I'll just click on something like this for example and then I'll just copy the link address and just play it from here as you're gonna notice on the right YouTube's gonna start recommending me a bunch of samples and basically what you want to do is just keep going through this as YouTube progressively is going to start recommending you more and more stuff that you're going to like. Another obvious thing you can do is look up stuff like soulful samples or really anything samples, you know, and go into filters and then you want to go into playlists. And then what you're going to find is a bunch of pre-made samples from a bunch of other producers all bundled together under certain themes. And a lot of the times you'll notice with a lot of samples, they have like a really good sound to them, but it may not be the exact sample that you're looking for. And this is a very important thing to understand. In that case, what you want to do is stop going from just the YouTube algorithm and why it recommends you and start looking up playlists, for example, from the person who actually makes the sample. This was made by someone named Nora Orlandi and it was composed by this guy named Grano Romolo. So what I'm gonna do now is because I like the way this sounds, I'm gonna look up his name. And just like that, I'm gonna have a preload playlist of a bunch of samples made from a guy who I know makes good music that I can sample. So the next thing you wanna have is this app called 4K YouTube to MP3. It's by far the best tool for converting samples into your FL Studio because literally all you need to do is just copy and paste the YouTube link, go into the 4K.YouTube app and just hit control V. And just like that, it's gonna download it and save it in its own personal folder that you can access with ease through the app. So let's say you find a sample, but you don't like the original quality of it, which I promise you is gonna happen a lot when you're sampling. You wanna get this app called Soulseek. This is also one of the best apps by far to have if you're a sampler. It was made in 2001, so back when like Boombap was more popular. And it's basically just an archive full of a bunch of sample playlists used by older producers. So it's literally a gold mine for finding samples. And without even knowing, I guarantee that this sample is already gonna be pre-saved on here. Seeing just like that, I can right click it and I can go download file and I can do the exact same thing and get a way higher quality quality version than the one I got on YouTube. So yeah, this is also like a very good app. You know, you can search keywords the same way we did with YouTube and you can look up things like Japanese trap samples, screw it. And there's so many libraries on here that I guarantee something's about to come up. See, and just like that, I have this insane library of samples I can just download with ease. And one final thing I mentioned before I wanna go on to actually chopping sample. When you're listening to samples, things you wanna look out for. One, you wanna look out for samples that have a lot of drums. Two, you wanna avoid using samples that are really just not on time whatsoever. Tempo is gonna be a very important thing as you guys are gonna see later in the video. And three, the most important thing is don't spend too long listening to one sample. Usually like 90% of the time when a song gets sampled, it's always like the first 16 seconds or so. So for me personally, I don't listen to a sample more than like 10 seconds before moving on to the next next one. Just be quick and get lost in the algorithm and eventually you're going to find something that sounds good. Okay, so now let's go over how you chop and manipulate a sample in FL Studio. First thing you want to do is open your sample and chop it up in Edison. The reason this is so important is it's very key that you find the tempo of your sample before slicing it, as well as make sure that's starting when the actual sample starts. Two things to do to make sure this works out for you is one, to uncheck the click-free smooth editing right here so it doesn't create a fade effect automatically wherever you slice your sample. And then two, to ensure that you're snapping at zero crossing. So as you enable that, you're going to feel it and you're going to look for the point where it naturally actually snaps. So right here, I know that's naturally gonna snap right there. So that's where I'm gonna be slicing the sample. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna delete it. And now we have a sample that's actually starting on time. So there's two main ways we can go with this now is one, we can use Fruity Slicer and two, we can use the tool that I like to use a lot called Serato Sampler. For those who use Fruity Slicer don't have Serato Sampler, I'm gonna show you guys the general process of what you wanna do. Set first downbeat like this. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lay down the start time for when it's gonna chop the sample. The next thing you wanna do is hit F2 on your keyboard and go down to the tempo. And then what you wanna do is auto detect 
track. And what you want to select detection for songs with constant tempo. So after you do that, when you hit accept, you just want to like copy this or like you want to set it to whatever the tempo is up here. And then finally, after that, what you want to do is you just want to take the part of the sample and you want to look at these lines right here because now it's going to be chopping exactly on beat. And you want to look for a point where you have any sort of loop. Like right here, I have exactly eight bars. So I know right at this point is where I want to chop the sample. For doing this, you also want to turn off the zero grid. We can fix that later. As well as what you can do is turn back on this click free smoothing. So then when we chop it, it's now going to give it this little fade so it doesn't have that same ticking noise when we play it on loop. And yeah, just like that, we have a sample that's perfectly sliced up and ready to be used in Fruity Slicer. Now, as I was saying earlier, though, this is a very old 1970s, 1960 sample. So I already know because it's played with live drums, that's not going to be on time. So in that case, I would never use this method. Instead, I would go into one of the best tools I've ever downloaded called Serato Sample. And yeah, and what I did was I just dragged that original sample that we put in here. Now, when you do this, what you want to do firsthand is listen to the actual sample. The reason you want to do this is because a lot of like really good samplers understand that when you're chopping and manipulating a sample, the things that you're looking for are either chords or specific notes. So in other words, when you are listening to a sample, what you really want to be listening for is what would the sample sound or look like if it was played in like a MIDI format in FL Studio. So I'm going to play a sample now. Hopefully I don't get a copyright strike. So when I hear that sample, I want to chop it up like na 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 na. I know the exact notes that I want to play. So based off what I hear in my head of what I want the sample to sound like when fully chopped, this is the general like note rhythmic pattern that I want to follow. And then what you want to do, whether you're on like a virtual or just your regular keyboard, you want to just play the keys corresponding to like what we laid out originally in FL Studio. So I'm going to fast forward and do that real quick. So now after stretching it a little bit more in to make it more on time, the general prototype of what I have laid out sounds like this. So as you can hear, that's not 100% on time to what I was originally going for. So now what we're going to do is the second process of this. And we're just going to go into Serato. And what you want to do is just have this play on loop in FL Studio. Go over to this wrench tool right here and just have it play over time. Because what this is going to do is make it so it doesn't move in Serato sample. And basically what I'm going to do is just manually dragging. I'm just going to move every single slice till it's perfectly on time along with the metronome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to time stretch this so it's a little bit longer. This is one of the biggest benefits to using Serato is just being able to time stretch things as well as pitch shift them at very specific points or play them on loop as you please. So this process is a little tedious, so I went ahead and already did this in FL Studio. So I chopped it up in two separate Serato sample points, and now what we have sounds something like this. Finally, what I did to that was I added this little gross beat four step like this. Not only is this gonna slow it down, pitch it down a little bit, but it's also gonna make it a little bit more on time because it's gonna add more on beat clicking sound. So for when making beats like this, you just wanna think of like general swings that the types of rappers who would use this stuff would like. So real quick, for beats like this, honestly, the best drum kits are like the snare Jordan drum kits. The reason the snare Jordan drum kits are really good is because they're samples of actual drum sounds from old records. And that's how a lot of these boom bap beats are made. All the drum sounds originally are either loops that come from other drum samples, or they're just one shot sounds recorded from those same samples and then being played in the same way we manipulated the sample. So this is a great way to get like an organic feel as well as give it a really unique groove to your beats instead of just using generic trap drums. Usually what I like to do, especially if you're using like loop drum sounds, is to emulate the same process process of what's being done in the Akai MPC. You want to take your loop and just go to cut self and you just want to play it like on beat like this or whatever in your pattern block. And then what you want to do is go into here and you just want to mess with the time knob until you find like a groove that's on time. A big part of giving these boom back kind of drums is ensuring that they're not insanely quantized. And the only way we're going to do that is by using stuff like drum loops, old drum samples and whatnot, as well as just intentionally making it so all our drum sounds are off time. Which speaking of, here's a really cool tip I learned from Hit Boy as well as Murder Beats with hi-hats. What you want to do is go into the function tab right here and just mess with this offset knob and what this is going to do is whether you're in FL Studio 11 or 20 it's going to offset the hi-hats so now they're not playing exactly on beat but they're playing a little bit more ahead and what that's going to do is it's going to emulate that realistic feel that we want with these types of drums so basically it's the drum equivalent of going your melody and randomizing the velocities to give it a little bit more of a human feel <laughs> For 
those who are hearing the sample and you hear like those little clicking noises, a lot of times, especially when you have a rapper, or you have drums or like any sort of bass sound playing over the sample, you're not gonna hear those clicking noises. So don't stress too much about them because you know, they can also help with creating the rhythm and giving it the general groove. But yeah, apart from that with drums, there's really not anything else you really need to know. It's usually like the simplest part of this process. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Instagram and Twitter, Fan of the God, make sure to go follow that again. Let me know in the comments what kind of videos you guys want me to do next on this channel. Make sure to go join the Discord link in the description. There's a free mini kit there for you guys to use. Also, don't forget to download the sample stash that I left in the description of this video for you guys to use and practice these kind of techniques that I taught in this video. And yeah, I'm out. Peace.